protect the house. Three points, baby. On the week five. Yeah. Okay, Derrick Henry, second all time. Yeah. I'm proud of y'all boys. Love y'all boys, man. I love the resiliency y'all showed. We come up here and showed it today against these boys. Hey, Titans on three. One, two, three. Titans. From the Bet MGM studio, welcome to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seat Geek with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. Titans knock off the Cincinnati Bengals 27 to 3. And generally, everyone we saw in that open made a play. It was it was basically everybody. I'll have to take your word for it. I wasn't watching well, the open. Okay. I was getting ready. You make me nervous. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. ready to go. I'm sorry. So, but anyway, take a lot my of word plays for made. it. A lot of plays were made. But the, but the point was, it was up and down the roster too. Yeah, and and I think that's when you can kind of see that complimentary football. Guys get ten snaps. Guys get twenty snaps. Fifty snaps. If they're taking advantage of the snaps that they get, we had a lot of guys help us, like you said, and that's uh, that's when I think things start to flow, and we're not forcing it to one guy on offense or everybody on defense is contributing. And there was a <clears throat> rhythm that your team got into and established offensively, defensively, special teams. Confidence goes up, and things just start to flow with that momentum. I think it does, and you fuel off each other. You fuel off each phase, and, and you're able to get stops, and you get a 20-yard punt return, and they have a penalty, and get a good field position. You hit a play, you hit another play, and you're able to uh, – to get into a rhythm of the overall football game. All right, let's take a look at the Mike Vrabel six-pack presented by SeatGeek. Okay, three offense, three defense. This is the play that got the offense started midway through the second quarter. Ryan Tannehill to DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, great protection, great double move at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Ryan liked the look, was able to talk to uh, Hop, signal Hop, and you know, able to hit him on a, on a huge conversion. And we've needed a conversion you know, Hop's been there. And I know that he wants, uh, like everybody else, he wants, you know, some touchdowns, he wants more catches. But right now, what, what I've said is that he's been really instrumental in us moving the, the sticks and, and being there for Ryan. Four catches, 63 yards for DeAndre Hopkins. Two plays later, a touchdown pass to Nick Westbrook Akine. Well, they, they brought pressure, you know, like they had shown uh, in the red zone or when you first get into the red zone or if you give up a big play. You know, Ryan's able to get it out there. Nick slides across, and then really just a lot of just you know, strength and, and commitment to, to get into the end zone. Uh, they've got guys waiting there, uh, but, but this is just a good individual effort there by Ryan and, and by Nick being able to get the catch and, and be able to get into the end zone right there. And then as you get later into the first half, the defense continuing to build. This is a third and 10 play, and it becomes obvious the defense is going to rally to the ball right here and not let Drew Sample pick this up. Well, here we are. We're thinking like, oh, man, how many again? He actually lost a yard. And that's, uh, you know, third and ten. You see us getting back there out of the picture with the sticks. You know, you see the speed here coming. Guys swarming to the football, running, uh, triggering. See guys getting out of there, getting depth, and he chips and releases. And you're like, well, how close is it? And it actually ended up losing a yard. And then it's Derrick Henry with his longest run of the year, a 29-yard touchdown. You know, great individual effort, but you see there Josh Wiley at the point of attack. You see Nick Westbrook blocking. You know, Dylan's down there, Dre's down there. We need some more guys. And then really just a, a fantastic individual effort here uh, by Derrick to take on the contact, make a guy miss, stiff arm the linebacker, and then outrun the DBs. And then that's pretty much what you see is what you get right there from Derrick. You see him make a guy miss. Uh, you see him stiff arm a, a, a linebacker and secure the football, and then you see him run away from DB. So a, a lot going on right there in that 29-yard run. So the defense for the Titans gave up just 136 yards in the last three quarters of the game. Last sequence for the Bengals, really their last chance, and the pass rush heats up Joe Burrow. It's hard and key. Well, you get pressure in the middle of the pocket, which allows him not to step up. 
Arden's down there low. I like that he doesn't put his helmet into the headgear, uh, but he's able to, to get the leg and kind of sweep it. Uh, but again, that, that was provided by the secondary and the push in the middle of the pocket. Sweep the leg. Sweep the leg. Sweep the leg. Okay, a couple plays later, literally their last chance. And here's the pressure once again. Harold Landry finishes off Joe Burrow on the last offensive snap of the yeah, day. Yeah, th this looked like some speed, and, and we tried to get around the edge and then, you know, chase the, the ball and, and the quarterback. And, you know, again, you're not always going to get them, but you can get up and you can chase. And, you know, we'd like to see a, a tomahawk and get that ball out. Uh, but there, there was some certainly some speed and violence in there. Harold Landry starting to get more active as we move yeah, further. I think further so. I think, yeah, I think he's getting a little bit more comfortable. And, you know, we're, we're going to play more guys. You know, we're going to see Travis here later in the day in, in this show, and uh, he's earned the right to play more, and so is Weave, and obviously Danico and, and Arden and Harold. So, you know, we're going to try to keep rolling guys through to mu as much as we can stop the run, and it allows us to, to earn the right to, to rush the passer. Okay, I'm knocking on wood. Are you pleased with your depth on defense right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've been able to play a lot of guys. Uh, you know, some guys stepped in there in the secondary when we had to have it. Um, you know, Hook was down a week, and uh, Christian was down a week. So we've had some guys play for us. We've played a lot of guys up front. Um, but, but we just, you know, next week's a new challenge. We continue to give love to both the offense and defense. In our next segment, we're going to break down an offensive play and a defensive play with the head coach at the Telestrator, the Mike Vrabel Show from the Bet MGM Studio, presented by SeatGeek, continues right after this. Interested to see what the head coach has to say about two key plays in the ball game and why they worked. Go to the Telestrator. The first one, he calls himself young Peyton Manning now with his fourth career touchdown pass. It's Derrick Henry. Why does this work, Mike? Okay, well, here we go. We shift Ryan out. Uh, we bring Derrick into Wildcat. Big Jeff shifts uh, to the end of the line of scrimmage. So building off a look that we ran last year against them or a couple years ago, where we're able to, to, to get Derek into the end zone from, from this Wildcat look. Uh, you're going to see uh, Cheddar Bob back there, Wiley uh, hiding back on the back Cheddar side. Cheddar Bob? Cheddar Bob, yeah. Okay. Long story, locker room stuff. But y y we're, we're overloaded down here, okay? So as Derek starts, you see a lot of these guys start to flow in this direction. I hope that's enough, Ashley, as we go to the videotape. Okay, we're going to let it roll, and now you're going to see as we pause it, okay, all these bodies crammed up in here looking for Derek. And we're able to slip back in here. Actually, it's going to be caught right in there. Can I say something? Yeah. I'm really impressed with the, the patience he shows he with this. He loves these plays. Okay. And that's why we keep doing but them. But the sell of it is the fact that he doesn't get in a hurry. Right. And, and he, he kind of looks down. He hides the ball a little bit. You know, we, we kind of tell him, like, run it until you can't. Right, and, and so obviously he's trying to sell it, but you can see what happens. You know, we got all this space back here uh, for us to kind of slip away. So, you know, the next one is we're going to get Ryan uh, to come run a front pylon. He's going to bring it back, and we're going to get him uh, right over here in the front pylon. That'll be the next setup. So you can see we're setting it up for next week. All right, that's okay? good stuff. Josh Wiley with the touchdown catch. Two catches in the ball game for him. Can now, we like, talk about the celebrate? He handed the ball to Jeff like Jeff did something. I said, Jeff, why'd you bully him for the ball? He goes, I was going to celebrate, and Josh handed me the ball. So then Jeff spiked it. Well, but isn't that respect, though? Don't you think that's respect? The rookie shows respect Jeff, to yeah, Jeffrey. That's his first touchdown. He should have Well, he got the ball, ball back, though, right? He I, got to keep it. I don't know. I didn't oh. track it down. Okay. So this is defense, and let's see a little Travis Gibson here. Okay. So obviously here, four down front. Um, but you can see we even and, and Travis are in here. They're rotating through. Um, it, it all starts with be, getting a good get off. Okay, you can see these guys here on the edge getting a good get off. Can, we talk about pass rush. Continue to work your hands and your feet as, as you make way to the quarterback. Um, Travis is able to corner. Okay, the quarterback still is on the t top of his drop. He's he's looking out here. His receiver's not quite into his route when he's ready to throw. And then as he hitches, right, as he's able to hitch, we'll take a look at this from the end zone. Okay, as he hitches, okay, now we're able to tomahawk the ball out of there. To me, that's the most important thing about getting a sack is being able to get the football out. 
Okay, you talk about working hands and feet, the first meaningful contact. Here's Weave with the speed to power. You're gonna see Trevis work a rip and then try to corner here. And that's the most important thing is that these guys are working together. Okay, so as Weave works into the face of the quarterback, okay, he's just as much to work on getting this sack here. The quarterback's looking, he pumps, and instead of him stepping up, now we can turn, bend, and corner and we're able to get that football out. That's the most important thing. That's the only reason we're doing it. And then I want you to look right down here. That's the guy that comes and ultimately recovers it. Okay, run into the football as that thing squirts out. Okay, not, not big old Tier standing there while, watching while everybody else is playing, but guys that are running to the football. Well, and not, Simmons, not looking for Sims, standing Simmons around. helps get it Let's out. work too. on getting here to the action. Yeah, good stuff. All right, when we come back, epic Western spotlight. The guys who helped make the Titans big and strong and lady as well. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show. It's time for tonight's epic Western Spotlight and we're going to introduce you to the Titans sports performance staff. It used to be known as strength and conditioning but it goes a little further than that now with how these players get ready with the help of this group which includes a young lady who joined the staff this summer, as a matter of fact. Enjoy this week's Epic Western Spotlight. Frank Perino always has a plan. The Titans' fifth-year director of sports performance isn't the only one. It's the same for Brian Bell, the assistant director of sports performance, who's now in his sixth year, Tyler Rouse, who's in his second season, and Haley Roberts, an intern who was promoted to full-time during this past training camp. Perino, Bell, Rouse, and Roberts, with the help of several other staffers, have an individual plan for every single Titans player. Individual planning really is a waterfall or a trickle-down effect where we start with body types. Linemen are one body type. Mids are one body type. Skills are one body type. Then we can split it up from there. Offensive and defensive linemen, linebackers, tight ends. So then it becomes positional. But some work is team-wide, like pushing the sleds. Everyone on the Titans 2023 roster, no matter the position, was asked to do sled work this offseason. Perino loved it because he felt there was tremendous carryover to football. Conditioning that's pretty similar to the energy systems used for football. Uh, and there's total body strength involved in it. Uh, there's teamwork involved in it. You know, so we've, we've split our players onto the sleds by, by position. Uh, we uh, intermingle offensive and defensive guys on the sleds. So it, it just is, you know, it was really Coach Rabel's idea that it's really you know, evolved into something great. Members of the sports performance staff may have areas of expertise, but none in the group focuses on any one area, and with good reason. Collaborative approach. Like, there's not just one person doing one thing all the time. Um, like, I've helped break down some of the GPS stuff. Whenever we're out of practice, or the team's out of practice, we'll be in here with the injured guys, and we'll rotate who has which injured guy, just so we can all have, that have a relationship with that specific athlete. One Titans athlete does get more attention than the rest when it comes to his training. Derrick Henry, he loves training and he does it rigorously. So is it harder or easier to make a personal training plan for number 22? Easier in the sense that he, he, he's a very hard worker. He's obviously, you know, been doing it for a long time. Um, he trusts us when he's in here um, to help him you know, which obviously makes things easier, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, he works very hard and, you know, the old saying, hard work pays off, I think, you know, you see it. The players have a respect and a trust for their sports performance staff. Because I know they want the, uh, the best for me and they know they're going to help me, uh, push me to my, to my potential as possible and just go in there and work and get, get work done and, you know, it, it'll pay off for me once it gets to the field. It's a staff with a lot of stability and a lot of know-how. Yeah, I think it's, it's great uh, diversity in there, uh, all different backgrounds and knowledge. And, uh, you know, I love how they, they work and they rotate. Um, you know, Frank coordinates that with, with me and, and Todd. And, 
You know, it is about the players. It always comes down to, to making sure. And you, we talked about Derek there, and he's got a, his own plan. And Derek doesn't practice every single day, and so, you know, they've got to keep him conditioned, but also, um, you know, try to take care of him for a long season. And Tyler Rouse, who uh, is all part of that staff, was a great schoolboy running back who was chasing Derek Henry for the high school record in both of their senior years. He only rushed for. 2,977 Yes, he was. Yards. I showed the team one year, and I said, Did you? you know who is second to Derek? And they said, Tyler. I said, you know who that is? And said, nobody. I said, Tyler, stand up. And the team about, they, they died. They didn't know that that was actually Tyler. Good stuff. All right, more coming up on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek from the Bet MGM studio. Stay with us. As we continue on the Mike Vrabel Show, coming to you from the Bet MGM studio, it is time now for kids. Ask Coach Vrabel. Hit that zippy or music. also known as my favorite part of the show. Yeah, there's zippy music with this. There it is. Hi, Coach Vrabel. I'm Caitlin, and I'm nine years old. When you were a football player, if you tackled Derrick Henry, would he fall forward or backward? Caitlin, I love that question. We, Derek and I talk about this probably uh, four or five times a day. Um, <laughs> at first, he would go straight up, and then I would run my feet, and then he would eventually go backwards. Uh, did you have any backs in the league? I guess Brandon Jacobs was in the league at that time. There oh, were I hit Brandon Jacobs one time, and I was on the ground, and I looked up, and I asked Brewski, I go, tell me he fell. And he goes, if you hurry, you could beat him off the ground. <laughs> we, we both <laughs> fell. <laughs> yeah, because I was, like, not really. I was just seeing whatever at black, and I was like, did he fall? And he's like, yeah, if you hurry, you can beat him off the ground. But there were more guys like that when you Andre, played. Andre, Bettis, Eddie. Yeah. You know. I mean, and, and that's the thing about Derek is there aren't many like him today because high school and college don't really produce those kind no, of backs. No, you know, I'm not, you know, he would make, you know, he would be a tight end. He'd be a defensive end, you know, just looking at body types from, you know, high school or college. But um, certainly has a, a unique skill set and, and one that uh, we, we have to continue to use. Caitlin might top the list right now. She is winning. That, that was a really, really good question, Caitlin. We've got more coming up. We've got I hope she believes me. Do you think she would? No. Probably. <laughs> probably not. We've got Mike Vrabel's keys to success, the Nissan keys coming up. As we're headed to Indianapolis, a lot to talk about. Stay with us. Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seat Geek. We move now to the keys of the game, which are presented by Nissan. Titans on their way to Indianapolis. And the first key, I mean. Well, the, the, the keys have a sponsor. Yeah, right? Nissan. But the yeah. Rebel Strader doesn't have a sponsor well, yet. Well, we're going to get on that. Okay. We're working on it. I'll, I'll do better, I promise. All right, stop the run. The quarterback scripted and off schedule. Talking about, I mean, it, Anthony Richardson is big. It is. It's for real. He's big. He's fast. Uh, he's strong with the football in his hand. I mean, they use him all over the field. Um, and it's not all that. It's not all quarterback run, but it's certainly a large part of what they do. We'll have to be ready for it. We'll have to force him laterally, and we'll have to get guys to the football. And then when he's dropping back to throw, if he likes the favorable look uh, of the secondary and our rush lanes aren't sound, you know, he'll take off. So he, he's making yards in a hurry. All right. So let's take a look at the second key. This is for the Titans offense. Be efficient on first and second down. When you look at our numbers, Mike, we're 55% on third and five or less. Okay, so that's that we're doing okay if we can keep it in third and five or less. 55% of the time we're converting, we're extending that drive. Um, if we get outside of that, bad things start to happen and, uh, and we're forced to punt or the ball gets turned over or nothing good happens there. So if we can stay efficient and, and be on schedule, similar to what we did last week, uh, we'll have a chance. All right, then let's take a look at a special teams key to wrap up the Nissan keys. Protect our specialists. Well, they got grid gunners. Tony Brown is down there. Uh, he, he's rolling and he is fast. Um, they're going to rush. You know, they're going to put some pressure on us. And so we, we need to be able to protect these guys. You can see if we protect our kickers, they've been, they've been kicking the football well for us. And if we can protect our returner, uh, they could take care of it. I think really what it comes down to when you talk about Indy in all areas, they have a lot of speed. They do. This is a fast football team. You can see what uh, um, 
you know, they, how they wanted to create this team with some, with some veterans, proven veterans, and then some, some young speed around it. Back in the AFC South. That's it. We're on the road. We've got to get one of these. Yeah. you to got to play more consistently on the road. Yeah. That would go without saying. All right. So we'll remind you that we've got Titans Countdown coming up this Sunday, 11 a.m. Central from Lucas Oil Stadium on 104.5 The Zone and all our great Titans radio stations. And by the way, you can now hear us on the Titans app as well. And then kickoff comes your way at noon Central Time. Titans and the Colts, who gets to three and two and takes the lead in the division. For Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek. We'll see you next time.